Hello, my name's Jules Howard. I'm a science writer and author of Wonder Dog, and I am delighted to introduce you Lily. Lily is the most beautiful, awesome dog in the world, and I'm very grateful to Lily for being here today. So as a science writer, dogs have always absolutely amazed me, particularly in the last 10 years, because they're helping us learn much more about animal minds, um, what it is like to be an animal, how they think, and what they know of the world, about consciousness and all sorts else. Now when you look at Lily, what you're looking at is an animal 10,000 years in its evolution, an animal that's evolved to fill the kind of human ecosystem. Although you look like a lamb, Lily, you are super adapted. You've super adapted to the human ecosystem. And all of the modern day differences we see in breeds pretty much come about from merely 400, 500 years of breeding. Now I'll tell you what, Lily, it is time for you to go. Are you ready to get down? Yeah, off you go. Yeah, that's your cue. Off you go. The last 10 years has seen some incredible, some spectacular science being done with the help of dogs. I thought I'd run through two or three amazing things I've discovered writing Wonder Dog that have helped improve our understanding of animal minds. So the first is animal emotions. So for 150 years or so, scientists, including Darwin, were really, really trying to find out more about what emotions animals have and whether they're different to the human emotional system. And for a long time, we didn't really have a good way in, a good methodology, if you like, for understanding what animal emotions kind of look like in comparison to our own, until um, about eight years ago, uh, the introduction of um, fMRI dogs. So these are dogs, family dogs, that have been trained to sit in fMRI machines and have their brains scanned. It's a fantastic um, experimental setup. You put a human in an fMRI scanner and you look at um, the pleasure centres, if you like, something called the chordate nucleus and how that lights up when humans see something pleasurable. And with these amazing fMRI dogs, you can put those dogs in the scanner uh, willingly with treats and then the experimenter goes, hi, and says something really warm to the dog and you can see the dog's brain lighting up in the same way that humans do. So fantastic methodology, really gives us a way in finally to understanding whether animal emotions are on a spectrum like our own. You know, if human emotions and dogs have the same emotional hardware. And this evidence is telling us, yes, they do. Another of the big mysteries, if you like, about uh, mammals in general is the strength of their attachment. So kind of, do they love, I suppose? And again, dogs are giving us a really good way in to discover more about that. So the second really interesting piece of research is to do with oxytocin and other brain hormones and neurotransmitters. And oxytocin particularly is known to rise um, during uh, pleasurable interactions. So it's a kind of a um, molecule that's evolved to bond mammal groups, family groups together. And through some, again, great methodology, you have a human and their companion dog and you put them in a room together and you measure how much the oxytocin rises or falls through a urine sample, if you're interested. Um, and then they sit inside a room and experimenters watch how often the dogs and the humans are looking at each other. And by doing that, we can see quite clearly the relationship between oxytocin boosts. So I suppose you could say um, an increase in, pleasure, in chemicals associated with pleasure you can see that boost in humans when they look at their dogs, something like a 300% rise, and dogs when they look at their owners, again, 150% rise. So what we're seeing, again, is this really interesting relationship between humans and dogs, and by extension, potentially other animals as well. The third really interesting thing is to do with genes, and particularly the genes that code for sociality. So there are two genes in particular that affect how social a mammal is. Uh, and including humans as well. So lots of mutations or insertions on those genes, we see sort of super social personalities in humans. Um, but we clearly see it with dogs. Now wolves have about two insertions, so they're fairly social. But in dogs, we now know um, dogs can have up to six insertions upon those genes. So in, in other words, they've become, if you imagine that the rest of nature is kind of like the survival of the fittest, with dogs, it appears to be the kind of survival of the friendliest. So those dogs with the most mutations are the ones making the most friends. They're the ones who are producing the most puppies. And we see evolution occurring in that natural sense, which is, again, absolutely fantastic. So 
for 150 years we've really been grappling with understanding animal emotions and then here we are with this modern relationship with dogs in science and we're exposing much more about how complex, unique, how deep their, uh, their capacity for emotions actually is. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you, uh, Lily. I don't know where you've gone, Lily. My overriding feeling having written Wonder Dog and researched this topic is um, the more compassionate we are with animals, the more intelligent they show us to be. And it's a really exciting area of science that I just know is going to grow and grow. So listen, Lily, 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 thank you very much for being here today. And thank you guys, all the best. The relationship that we have with dogs can be really, really useful for um, training them to do amazing things. And I completely lost my thread because I'm like, oh dear, the carrots are going, oh dear, they're gone. We did well, didn't we? We got our two sentences down.